Hey guys, PowerMax here. Today, I want to share with you guys a little boost converter that I built. You can see here, I have a little LED module that features six Cree XPE uh, LEDs. Well, at least I think that's what they are. Uh, they draw somewhere around one amp, uh, you know, about 3.3 volts a piece. Uh, six of them in series, it's about 20 volts for that module. And then here I have a little boost converter circuit. So here we have our switching node. This is the transistor that is doing all of the switching. And here we just have a little gate driver IC. And this package right here is the Schottky diode. And this is the smoothing capacitor. And we are driving that gate driver IC at 200 kilohertz. The fluke here is set up to measure the current through the LED string. Uh, and the unit T multimeter is measuring the voltage across it. All right, so now let's go ahead and power up this circuit. We will slowly wind the voltage here up and up. 30 millivolts, 40 millivolts, hey, there we go. So now you can see these LEDs are just barely starting to turn on. The current we're pulling is not even registering on the meter uh, and we are pushing about 14 volts across these LEDs. Let's go ahead and wind this up a little bit further. At around 600 millivolts, the LEDs are definitely turning on. And now uh, with a one volt at the input of this, uh, we are getting 16 volts at the output and 13 milliamps. The brightness of these LEDs is probably comparable to those uh, solar powered garden lights. Let's go ahead and step this up to two volts. Uh, LEDs are noticeably brighter. Uh, now we are starting to have a actually useful amount of light. You will notice that as we raise the voltage here, the current really starts to increase pretty sharply. Uh, and the LEDs are also getting noticeably brighter. At around 4 volts of input, we are now looking at around 4.4 amps of current draw. And now we pretty much maxed out our power supply. We can't really go any higher than this. So before we burn up our transistor, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. Now, as you're able to tell, the efficiency of this circuit is rather poor. I did some measurements previously and it was like less than 50% efficiency. Uh, it was like somewhere around 30% actually. It was pretty bad. All right, you're noisy as hell. So did you guys notice anything strange about the circuit? Something is off about it. Are you able to tell what it is? If you guessed that this circuit is missing a connection to the VCC rail for the skate driver IC, you would be correct. This gate driver IC is not powered. Well, at least not powered conventionally. So this gate driver IC actually derives its power from the function generator. When the function generator applies a 10 volt signal to the input of this device, the DC portion of that current is going to conduct through the internal ESD diodes inside of the CMOS chip and charge up the decoupling capacitor for the chip. And this supplies the chip with enough current for the full 360 degree cycle. But guys, there's something else missing from this circuit and it's even more significant than that. Did you guys catch on to the fact that I forgot the inductor? Now all switch mode power supplies need inductors as the storage element to convert one DC voltage and DC current into another DC voltage and DC current. It's just the fundamental operating principles for how switch mode converters in general work. Typically, you will have an inductor such as this one. This is kind of like a comically large one for this application, but just to kind of show you the point, this inductor will go in series, something like that. And generally speaking, you will also have a capacitor from here to ground so that you don't have uh, high AC currents coming from your supply. However, in our case, we completely omitted it. So we are in fact relying on the parasitic inductance of these supply leads supplying the circuit with power. And that is actually how this boost converter works. All right, so I think finally, we are going to take the LCR meter. Uh, we are going to short this side of the circuit. We're gonna pull this off and we're gonna measure what, the, what this parasitic inductance actually is. Now we had them twisted together, so I will do my best to keep them kind of sort of the same. We are definitely measuring parasitics here, so we wanna kinda of keep that Keep the, all of that in mind. So with the leads not electrically connected together, you can see we have about 29 picofarads of parasitic capacitance that are separated by a dielectric. If we go ahead and then short these together at this end, we are measuring at 100 kilohertz, which is pretty close to the 200 kilohertz we were running our circuit at. And we're measuring an inductance of 555 microhenries. Now the Q factor is relatively low. That's probably to do with kind of the jankiness of this uh, quick test. But that's to show you that the inductance of your supply leads can be pretty significant uh, when you're doing power stuff. And this is the reason why you have decoupling capacitors next to your loads. 
Now, in the case of uh, this boost converter that is outright missing the inductor completely, you actually do not want to add the coupling capacitors to that because that would effectively put a capacitor on your switching node and that's not what you want. So now I'm gonna show you what happens if we have a larger loop area. So I'm going to untwist these wires, untwist, untwist, and I'm just gonna try to do something crazy like this. And now we are measuring, what is that, like three times the inductance? We have this huge massive loop area now, this big magnetic loop here, and as a result of that, our inductance went up quite a lot. Uh, you'll see our Q factor also went up a little bit. So this is why when you're doing anything with power, you typically want your positive and your negative leads to run closely together uh, for the whole length of the run. And where they end up terminating at your load, you want to use some decoupling capacitors, at least when you're not building really shitty boost converters that lack an inductor. Another problem with having leads like this with a high AC current going through them is going to be EMI. You're going to have radiated magnetic fields and you're going to have radiated electric fields due to the changing voltages. These wires are going to start acting like antennas. So that is another reason to add decoupling capacitors at the side of the load. You eliminate a lot of that kind of nonsense. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, video exploring a pretty janky boost converter. Um, hope you learned something and see you guys next time.